Hello, good afternoon, and welcome to this roundtable discussion that we have prepared about immersive technologies in the classroom. Today, we will talk about these immersive technologies that are virtual reality, augmented reality in the classroom, and how these can be learning methods. Our panel members have very enriching experiences. On the one hand, an experience concentrated on the creation of content, and we also have the classroom side, real experiences about how these new technologies, these new immersive technologies, these new experiences may have an impact, as we know, in the classroom environment. So, who are our guest speakers? And we have Alicia Canellas. I have here a few notes about her CV, not to forget anything. She's a consultant in innovation and training at Vision. She studied pedagogy at the University of Barcelona, and she, in fact, is finishing her PhD. And she has focused her research on extended reality and how this technology can help people with reduced mobility, which I believe is so interesting. I hope she will explain with us all of these technologies in her projects and initiatives, which, which she has also carried out. And I'm sure everyone will be very excited about that. Luis Villarejo works, he's the CEO of Immersion Studio, where they use immersive technologies to increase efficiency and the motivation and retention education in companies, educational institutions, and cultural institutions. He works in these learning experiences applied to the world of construction. And he has worked for 15 years in the learning technologies office of the Open University of Catalonia, which is absolutely exciting. And we are not only talking about content creation experiences, which, as you can see, is closely related to the world of training and education. It is intertwined. I mean, he has always wanted to keep in touch and related to university. And we also have uh, Jesus, who is an emeritus professor at the INS Villa Zara, at the high school Villa Zara. He has many, many contents and training materials, which he has created for the Ministry of Education of the Catalonian government and also for the Ministry of Education of the Balearic Islands. And his experience in the classroom will be very valuable because of his long-standing experience. And finally, we have Francesc Nadal, who is also a professor since 2003 at the, at the high school in Palamos. And in addition to it all, he's a trainer of trainers. In other words, he's a trainer of professors. He is a lecturer and a workshop guide in many educational technology events, all of them related in augmented reality or virtual reality applied to the field of education. So he's a specialist in these fields. So we thank all of them for this, for their participation in this panel discussion. Fine, so I hope that with this short introduction, with our four panel members who represent a wide range of experiences in the field of content creation. So we can bet on this vision about how they design new immersive experiences. Bearing in mind how we can include these new technologies in the classroom, in the classroom or in learning spaces. These experiences like the one Jesus has accumulated. So these two visions from the point of view of immersive technologies applied to the classroom will be indeed very 
enriching and exciting. So please do ask many questions, both to Alicia, Luis, or Jesus, or Francesc. We will share all of these concerns and questions with them. So let's start with Alicia. She is the one who will be talking to us first. She will be introducing herself, the topic she will uh, talk to us about. And then we will go one by one. Each one of them will be making a presentation. And then we will have a Q&A session. Alicia, do you have the floor? Thank you, Beatrice. I'm going to share my screen. I have prepared a few slides. Can you see my screen? Yes? Excellent. Well, to start, thank you so much to the organizers for having invited me to participate in this event. This is very innovative and enriching. My paper, my presentation, is entitled Immersive Experiences in the Classroom Towards a Learning Experience with Augmented Reality in a Creative and Inclusive Way. This is the conceptual concept that covers all immersive technologies in the classroom. Okay, I am a consultant in innovation and training in uh, XR at the group Media Provision Company, and I'm working on my PhD at the moment. Let me talk to you about the general vision we have at Vision. Okay, how we get to, I mean, Vision is a company that's leading in the innovation industry not only in terms of training, very important industry and sector for us, but also in different realms. In terms of the value chain, we intervene from the point of innovation, consulting, creativity, production, and development, all the way to the technical development. So this year, back in 2012, we were created. And we had property, proprietary platforms that wanted to accelerate the process of innovation, both for immersive content and for those addressed to augmented reality and also Pitypool, which is the first platform with an immersive 360 format. So on the one hand, we have a 360 degree vision camera in, a, in an oil platform. And on the other extreme, we have people in any part of the world connected to a virtual vision device that see either the machine as if they truly saw everything. So thus, you are showing, I'm showing you already the potential all of this implies. So I'm going to try and talk about immersive reality in different dimensions. And to start, I'm going to give you some examples that we have carried out. Let's start with hard skills. How these technologies can be used in the classroom for theoretical knowledge and for technical skills. One example could be the application that's accessible for smartphone. As you can see on the right hand side, this is a repository of educational resources that are designed by the teachers themselves. The teacher acts as a consultant in this case. And that's how we generate it. SMSs, etc., to have content. So this could be a very interesting device for some learning processes, 
for students in this sector to have augmented reality resources. Another example about immersive technology. This would be simulation for companies. Simulations, for example, of a lift or a bridge crane. In this case, even if the student makes a mistake with boxes or in a lab, it, you know, it's a totally safe environment. There are no consequences. And it, the student experiences it as if it were a real situation, another situation something we've done with the IQTC of the University of Barcelona, which you can get for free through your smartphone, it's what we call mod more, which allows you to create I mean, you can see the characteristics and the alliances. It is very interesting with augmented reality. Here, in augmented reality, we have wanted to give you this example because these technologies, what they give you a chance to do is to implement techniques of gamification. This is an example of the Museum of Art of Girona, where they have a device adapted for children, where people suggest challenges and tests to them to actually add scores. And it is a very enthusiastic and very exciting immersive experience. Now, so we go from the hard skills to the soft skills to improve your intrapersonal and interpersonal skills. Okay, this is quite generic, but these technologies on the one hand allow students to experience simulated real situations in order to strengthen their skills. For, exa for example, if you have an experience in which you have to work in a team, or you have to solve problems, or you have to speak in public, and you also have to go through interviews in an immersive environment. That's the concept, to place students in a situation in which he gets the feedback. And there is a self-assessment to determine how good he has done. So now let's go to the onboard and social issues. of the social component of it. In this case, we can go from content in themselves to show our center, as is the case of onboarding 360 degrees of Isade. And you can also show ways of doing things, especially with the pandemic. You can see the classrooms, how they are through this type of device, or you can go into more social environment. For example, the University of the Future, which is aligned with this platform, which is used by the social sector. And it proposes an action with virtual reality eyeglasses and you go through different rooms in which different activities are carried out. And another very interesting space, which is where you can actually interact with other students and where you can actually cooperate in teamwork. And finally, the last dimension I wanted to share with you is about diversity and inclusion. 
These technologies can be used in the classroom in order to raise awareness about the importance of more inclusive species and to show empathy with regards to the dimensions of diversity based on VR experiences, virtual reality experience. You can actually talk about gender, the LGTBI diversity, etc. And I'm going to stop here for one second to talk about the benefits of XR, of augmented reality. On the one hand, we have an immersive learning first person for the student. It is at the eye, at, at the eye level, practice and experimenting in safe environments pre to prepare the student for real situations, to reduce the learning curve at the learning time, and above all, an emotional engagement, which implies that you have greater retention. You memorize things better, things that are memorable that you will remember longer. And you have the assessment of the measures you can have. You can obtain metrics, systems of assessment, etc. And okay, having dwelt on this, with regards to diversity and inclusion, we have a challenge. And this is true for other technologies, not only the immersive ones. It is a challenge that I'm actually approaching in my PhD, which I was talking about at the University of Pompeo Fabra with vision. The challenge is that achieve that students like Jordi could also enjoy all of the benefits of XR to contribute, to make XR more accessible for people with reduced mobility and to contribute to develop the positive applied uses that can benefit the welfare of people with reduced mobility. A whole research work has been carried out with a database from Harvard to know what are the limitations or technologies that could be most adequate and also in depth to find out what's the state of the art at, and also in depth interviews with experts and then a Delphi questionnaire leaker. Part of the research work that, that will be during the third year, we have developed a prototype, an adapted VR prototype. Back this week, I finished doing the experimental work for this group. And now we are in the phase of results analysis. So let me end my presentation with the following question. The question is, how do we want the future to be? In this case, I guess that you will all agree with me that we want a more inclusive and accessible XR future. And that's all. Thank you very much indeed for your attention. Well, thank you, Alicia. How interesting, how fascinating your PhD work is. Fine. So now let's give the floor to Luis, who has worked on immersive content creation. Luis, whenever you want, you have the floor. Well, thank you. Thank you, Alicia, for your presentation. Okay, what I wanted to share with you is uh, the advantages of immersive learning. There are many branches that stem from the 360 degrees interactive, especially our experience at the studio. What are the fields in which we believe that the application of these technologies generates positive effects and larger effects. So let me share my screen in order to make, to show you the presentation I've prepared for you. Fine, I'd like to start it out by introducing ourselves. We are Immersion Studio. We were created three years ago and we're composed, we're a team composed by pedagogists, communicators, technologists, and creative experts in immersive training. 
Our idea is to build up immersive experiences that help people. We have been lucky enough to work with some of the institutions that appear here, the United Nations or Cosmo Kasha as well, just you know, for, to, to develop different pieces for the Science Museum in Barcelona. And we will soon do it again. And I, I let me talk to you a little bit about this. How do we apply immersive learning in order to obtain results in the classroom? And the first thing I'd like to do is to show you this video of an application stemming from Google application, which has been discontinued, unfortunately. But it's a very good example of how we can introduce this te digital technology in the classroom. I mean, you bring, you take your students to places a school cannot reach. Let's see it. And then we will continue. Unfortunately, the video sound does not reach the interpreter, so I can't stop the video for you. I apologize for that. brings the lesson to you. You have to see it for yourself to believe it. There's so much other places to see, so you know that it's never going to end. So expeditions is an example, a clear example. It's a very clear example of how we can make the most of immersive technology in order to immerse our students in scenarios that motivate and capture their attention and that motivate them to learn. And that, as Alicia has said beforehand, it leaves the, on them a much durable imprint. No, no, please. No. No, por favor. No. So I was telling you, the magic of immersive learning at school is to capture the student's attention and then to work on the content that teachers need to work out for the benefit that you bring them to a context that's relevant for the context, for the reality. So that's what we do. We work with 360 interactive videos, a branch is in the one you have a visa and you see a scenario. And the other one is the 360 degree video with augmented reality. And then what you see is a scenario that's immersed in a situation in which you see real people, et cetera, et cetera. So what we do is we add interactivity so that what you actually do, I always give the example of adventure boats from when I was a young boy. There are different points in the story in which it is it. If you go to go to the forest, you have to go this way, or if you're going to want to through the road. And then you followed a different story. Here it's the same, but with a virtual reality device, which is a 360 degree interactive video and then you navigate through the story. And in order to exemplify this, 
who were given the first award to the first immersive educational experience in the world to prove the feedback communication. When you put on the device, you see that a meeting has been created with a problem. And then you have to respond. And each one of the managers has a different communication stereotype or cliche, an aggressive, one a communicative, one etc. And you compare the different consequences of their decisions and based on making mistakes in a scenario that does not imply a uh, anything in the real world, you explore this space. And then you feel much more comfortable and you feel much more comfortable in real life. Here, I've given you a recording of what a person sees when he or she actually places these eyeglasses. Beginning, you have a presenter that says what you can do, what you cannot do, what's the context of the experience. And then you start talking. One of the three types of, of, of bosses here you have. And based on this, the, the action starts. You have the head, he makes decisions. And when you make decisions, you're placed in one, po one possibility of the story, etc. The following question is, does this work? I mean, in order to explain how it works, whether it works or not, we always give this example. You have 100 resident surgeons who are being trained, and the point is to see how many of them could complete with this type of training a full surgery. 83% of them were able to do it with when they were trained with VR. With traditional methods, none of them. So this can be applied to any field of training. Well, probably not. We can apply virtual reality to many fields, but not to all of them. Now, the key is to know what are the fields. This way of teaching becomes a complement that really adds a value added. And here we explain a number of fields in which it adds a lot of value added. When you place people or students in places or roles in which normally they can't develop. To promote empathy, to promote teamwork, to solve conflicts, for conflict solving at the classroom. For example, this is a paradigm when the use of the 360 degree immersive tool places you in a conflict, in the midst of a conflict situation, and you learn how to solve things. And you have the feeling of déjà vu. You have been here beforehand for uh, social intelligence, emotional intelligence, self-knowledge, communication and feedback, decision-making, and hard skills. I mean, it's crucial to know the field in which we're applying it. And then how will we improve with this sort of technology, the training? If we choose well, we have a good approach. The point is to have a strong approach. The effect or the advantage of these type of resources, first and foremost, you can multiply up to four the percentage of retention of content. Why? Because you're fully immersed in a highly realistic scenario that's relevant. And you're not watching a film. You make decisions. And these decisions affect the evolution of the training experience. And that affects, well, that increases actually the retention up to four times. It allows you to multiply by to the empathy of the user with what's being communicated to him. And we can actually transfer that. And it is a good approach because things are well-defined and the technical production is well done and you can reduce up to 50% the time. And a lot of these 
trainings are done in real time. It reduces up to 50% your training time. And that implies a wonderful situation, a wonderful training situation. To do it here in Barcelona is not the same as doing it in Madrid. But with a system like this, your students can go through the same training resource. And the homogeneity of the training is a very interesting advantage. And to end, oh, here we have some, okay, I'm not going to show you start hard cases. I'm going to actually do that during the Q&A. We always work with co-creation. People talk about other difficulties. And we improve the training experiences. It's not a recipe, it's not a one size fits all. The approach that offers guarantees is co creation, to put on the same table, around the same table, professionals who have different points of view and different knowledges about the environment. And they are experts in applying immersive technology. Okay, I'm about to keep my hard cases for the Q&A, as I told you beforehand, in order to share them with everybody. And this is a way for me to introduce how immersive experiences and 360-degree videos can improve the classroom experience. And we should, we should not try to actually focus only on doing. Thank you, Luis. Thank you for talking to us about the advantages and the process. And we are So, okay, we have to hear these specialists who work from the classroom. Jesus, you have the floor. Let's see what you have to share with us. Good afternoon. Thank you for trusting professors of public school. I'm going to go down to the trenches. simulators. At high school, here you can have anything you want. To access impossible places. Virtual reality is wonderful for this. And you can get into a drawing, into a three-dimensional world. And I don't know what happens to the brain, but that's what you feel. Why don't we use augmented reality and virtual reality? People want to do things. Some people do not want to do anything, but let's talk about those who do want to do things. You have 
you know, all of the subject matters, you have PISA, you have exams. People are just, they have too much in their brains. There is nothing worse than when you do something with your students and whatever. And he just closes it and disappears. Thinking that by just searching in Google, they'll find it all. And then here we have the problem of connectivity. Well, I'll have to raise my voice. Connectivity is not well consolidated. Not only on the side of professors and teachers, but also on the side of students. We also believe, we tend to believe that students are experts in connectivity, but the, the only thing they do is to consume. And then people like Francesc Nadal, you know, are, it's, it's like a mushroom that appears all of a sudden. And then teachers who do things like this. You know, we just appear all of a sudden in the world. I have used augmented reality and virtual reality in many research works. I work with students, research projects, and multidisciplinary projects. That would have been impossible without them. And I want my students to create something. So, student creation. Augmented reality through markers. The great problem of technical drawing, of not understanding physics, and with an augmented reality, you can see a figure right now moving in the paper as a marker. During the last 12 years, there have been three or four projects. This was a flash of the beginning. This one with a final and definitive book of axonometry in augmented reality. With the last 10 years of SATs, scholastic aptitude tests to reach university with volume and everything, the creation of axonometric figures in augmented reality. You see the figures with volume, and that, thus you can understand them better. The diadric system, I mean, it's impossible to understand. And with augmented reality, you see how the lines cross each other or cut each other, and you can move them in space. This is a piece of work I'm so happy about. Augmented reality and museums, done with the European Museum of Modern Art, next to the Picasso Museum. And the students would make these works. This work was awarded as the first the award for the young researchers in Spain. She was given 1,000 euro, and her teacher got a beautiful paper-based diploma. Another interesting piece of work was augmented reality and cooking. There was a student who wanted to explain the cooking in his or her county, Bergeda. And we started that in a restaurant. Fashion, high school kids, they love seeing how they're dressed. So we have augmented reality works. Fashion is a great motivator, you know, with fashion books and markers. And here too, I want to thank publicly the people who have helped me to do this. They allowed me to have a scan to have an augmented reality piece of work with real students. Something else that existed beforehand and that now has stopped existing are geolocalizations. That has disappeared. In our municipality, Villa Sardemar, you have different pathways to follow. We created geolocalizations for everything. 
That is, there is no way of doing it. We used to use these geolocations, and the kids would go with their smartphones around, and we would do this with us. Another journey we took was to the Children's Hospital of San Juan de Deu. They saw how the hospital was inside for the kids who had to come soon to make them lose their anxiety of going to hospital. And then if a kid had to go there to have a surgical operation, could see this and see what would expect, what he could expect. Thinking machines, you can do, you can do wonderful things. For example, this is a piece from 17 year old students, a uh, National Catalonian Art Museum visit with Roman, Romanesque art. That kid learned so much. And here we have what we have enjoyed the most, the multi-sensorial experiences. That was a total success. We went to the old people's home in the village with our devices, and we we brought them. We, we actually created a real immersive experience for the grandpas and grandmas there with real sand and water. These are people who cannot leave their, the old, their old people's home, and we allow them to actually experience as if they were out at the beach. For touch, sight, this was good for these ladies. Uh, feed, smell, the sense of smell with plants, hearing. In spite of the fact that you have headsets, some grandpas and grandmas have are hard of hearing. You know, they have difficulties to hear. And then, even that we have come here to talk about teacher tools, I don't know whether Frances has talked about this or not. I'm going to, I'm going to, to, to mention it. For those who are interested in the use of augmented reality, we have created a workshop, a, a training workshop, with Frances Nadal and Perry Navarro and myself for you to enjoy. Now, if teachers are interested in doing these sort of things, in, ma in many resource centers, there are materials that can be asked for. Devices, cameras, 360-degree cameras. This is a classical briefcase with a camera and the mobile. And here, another tool is the code, Jesus R, to have the pro version of those pieces, which is a program that has a lot, it's not perfect, I know, but with this code, you can get hold of all of the versions. It's a fantastic program to do many, many things. Is the easiest way of doing virtual reality and augmented reality. And there are many schools that are using it. There is a teacher from Galicia who does many things with children. And then the so called the Merge Cube, which is a device with some free applications. The free part is excellent to make an immersion, an introduction to augmented reality. It allows you to use the cube. Here we have an example of a school making some practices with it. It was a book review for each child. And then we can talk about virtual reality and augmented reality and special needs education. Some people need have special needs. 
and you have to do things differently. You need to grant. This is wonderful. It's very difficult to value or to assess whether these young people end up accepting this or not. But for the families, it's wonderful. They really like it. It guarantees our success. You have Martha from the Canvilla Diet School. This, if you can look it up at the internet, you know, the water cycle class in the USA, it's excellent. It is so wonderful for special need students. This year, we did some tests with the Cube Merge. It's interesting to find out, to discover the incredible capacities that some of these kids have. Here we have a giant cube for them, for, for, to make it easier for them to use. And COVID did something that does that was wonderful. Carbon is very cheap. And when we were exchanging things with since I mean cardboards are very cardboards are very cheap, and so they would actually bring a mountain cardboard. And in open days we present this works. We're also present in inclusion journeys. In, in 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 trade shows and 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 fairs. This is this year. What sixth grade students did? We gave them we gave them one of these cubes to build up, and it was the kid themselves who who explained how to do it and who shared it. This is one of my students explaining virtual reality and augmented reality to teachers. That was in the city of Mataro. We summoned teachers who wanted to use augmented reality, and that was truly extraordinary. And I'm going to talk about this because Francesc will talk about it, I reckon. And that's it. Thank you. I hope I didn't take more time than had allotted to me. Excellent. Very good, very inspiring. You know, and you have shown us the side of student creation, which is also fascinating. And your ex the experience with the elderly, that's so moving. And that's really beautiful. It is so powerful. It really works out very well. Thank you ever so much for this very inspiring presentation. I mean, I wish I could enjoy each one of them. And now from the classroom point of view, now we have Francesc, who will end the round of presentations. Francesc, fine. Good afternoon, everybody, and thank you for inviting me. After these three presentations, I feel, I hope I will have something new to show you. Let me share my screen with you to start. Okay, I am one of those mushrooms, isolated mushrooms that Jesus mentioned, working with augmented reality and virtual reality with my students. To start, in order to contextualize the discussion, we have to bear in mind to those who are listening to us that technology is a tool. What we want are, is for our students to learn. That's the ultimate goal. I mean, technology is not an end in itself. Of course not. And we can use this technology with students in subject matters that are neither technological nor scientific. I mean, it's not STEM or STEAM, science, technology, engineering, mathematics. Why not add other subject matters, a globalized approach? And this is something I've been doing in the past 15 years. Let me show you the example of Iñargonauta. Maybe 
you know about it. It was started in 2012 with students from grammar school all the way to high school. It's a project with students of classical languages and economics. As a point of reference, when it comes to basic names or marks or even ads, and in order to show it, in order to unite antiquity with modern techniques, with augmented reality and to share it all in one single block. You go through the street and you find names for interflora, logos, this is uh, trident, or names that sound good, veritas. So I'm going to show you very briefly for you to see what I'm talking about. This is a project that went from 2012 to 2018. Many of the tools that we used do not exist anymore. And we have had to look for alternative options. Because when things didn't work, we had to change. So very briefly, let me show you. This is an example of the block. He creates the letter alpha with markers and an alpha Romeo. This is a Delta motorbike. They would do it at home. I mean, it's not necessarily in a place. These are videos from 2012. They're having a good time. They are not just consumers of these augmented reality applications, but they would create their own content. Okay, I'm not going to continue with this, but that's the idea of this project. So we have been evolving, and then we wanted the students to be an inherent part of an artwork, classical pieces, based on myths. And the work was to learn who the characters are, in which museum the work or the piece was actually kept. This is Rubens. We see the students. Paris had to choose the most beautiful of them all. And here you see that they would actually get dressed. I mean, it's much more attractive or much more inspiring or motivating than a purely memory-based lesson. Another project I wanted to share with you is what we called Brilla. It was created in 2015 for freshman students for the first year of high school in Roses. The point was to work a history of civilizations with virtual reality. So we started with an activity centered on Egypt, and then we continued with Greece, and then with Rome. Now, the links we have here, and I, I will try and share them with you in the social media, can be found. You, you can find all of this material. So, which resources did we use? There, some of them are still in force. You can see them uh, with eyeglasses, with skyboard. We also showed spherical photographs, street view, that the users shared with us, and also materials created in 360 videos, YouTube VR. And they can be used for educational projects, and then other apps that existed then and that have disappeared now. Egypt Kemba from R. Lupa. Acropolis Interactive from Mosaic about the experience in Egypt. Acropolis Interactive was about the Acropolis Temple in Athens as it was 2,600 years ago. 
And for people who had vision problems, we created this with a 3D print printer, classical artworks so that they could see them in an alternative way. And we did this through the cooperation with professors. I mean, sometimes we, we, we always ask the students to cooperate between them, but with for us professors, it's hard to cooperate. Let me give you a short view of how this Vrila was. Without sound, you can see the students using their own mobile devices, their own cardboard. They were on the corridors, which is a learning space, as I've said beforehand. And notice that why are they at the courtyard or on the corridor? Because sometimes we had connectivity problems. And then they could do it out in the corridor. And here they are really they have really flipped over because they're 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 amazed at how at what they're seeing. And finally, what Jesus has mentioned, the Vriteca project. It's a project, it's a collaborative project. It, it is a language learning collaborative project with virtual reality focusing on students that are third from third and fourth grades. It was created within the framework of M School's EduHack 2018. Uh, it, it's, a, it's a simple way of learning foreign languages. Five students actually record each other with a spherical camera. And then the colleagues from other courses can script these contents in a situation, for example, at first was a restaurant to see their level of knowledge or fluency of English. And finally, the two videos we had, this is the video that some students did. We went to Girona to create content. And within the video, which is immersive. Maybe there are subtitles, maybe they have to make decisions. There is a YouTube channel that collects this experience. Let me just show you very quickly the sort of situations we're talking about. This is the video created by the students What to see what they are able to do. This is so powerful. And we always believe that we teachers are the only ones who have ideas and students really surprise you. And this is the welcome that was given to them by the members of the School of Hospitality at Girona. It was a beautiful experience. So what we did is to take this to the classroom, to take this experience to the classroom to see how it worked. And what we noticed, the five high schools that worked on this project, is that clearly the students' vision and attention was raised with regards to the control that each high school has. I mean, working with restaurants, but without this virtual reality resource, the group that had used virtual reality as a resource. I mean, it, it is not a, a, a solution for everything. It's not, it, it, but you know, there wasn't, there wasn't much difference with regards to others who did a video with more traditional resources, potential resources. And to end, I'd like to thank you. I'd like to invite you to participate in this session with many, many questions to all of us, to all panel members. And I want to leave you with this image because I believe that all of these are small seeds that should fertilize in the use of technology amongst our students. Thank you. Well, thank you, Francesc. I wanted to highlight one common characteristic, one common denominator that I've heard from all of you. You have all talked about content designed for learning and also for the creation of new content by students as part of the learning process. 
And this, I believe, is such a powerful message. This implies content creation on, uh, on both sides, Augment, the augmented one with the methodology, with this pedagogical goal, or students, and the other one is the student as a creator in this learning space, how the student can use these technologies, probably as a motivating factor, but also to learn directly. And now we will start with a discussion. And for that, I have, well, we have already a few questions. I don't know whether amongst you, the different panel members, I mean, you have listened to your presentations. Maybe you have a question for your panel colleagues, for your panel mates. So t do tell me, please. Because I'm sure that many questions will be raised by the different presentations. Okay, Viviana Núñez from Llegando al Rec School asks, I fully agree with what has been mentioned that ephemeris applications, the tool created by Google was wonderful. That was a big bet, as has been mentioned. In fact, we have mentioned that there are many initiatives, actions that have been undertaken in these platforms. And Viviana asks, is there currently a platform that could be applied to grammar school and for other, yes? Would, like, would anyone like to answer Viviana? Jesus and Frances, maybe you know better the platform world. Well, it's very hard to find something that's for free. The choices for grammar school are Go Spaces. Go Spaces is very good for grammar school. You have also heard me talk about Crack. Well, it's Crack for grammar school. The work you do with Go Spaces allows you to create something that can be immediately applied to the smartphone in virtual reality. But there is nothing that is free and easy. No, I'm sorry. We're missing that. It should be done because we, we feel quite abandoned. At any rate, the platform, I mean, a small part is technium. I mean, to do something, even if it's just simple, it could be useful. Well, you see what happens is out of these platforms, for example, Sloop has changed its conditions in two weeks. And if you're not registered and you do not pay what you had done, disappears. So that's a huge risk to run. I mean, with regards to augmented reality, what's safest is Unity with Euphoria. That's, that's the best. Virtual routes, it's all very, very unstable. You, you, you need to use a few platforms because if you do it with one single one, things disappear and it's a big risk to run. Well, I agree with what Alicia has said about platforms. For vir virtual visits, there is one called ThinkLink that worked quite well. And it's very much used by the educational community. I mean, you can't publish 40,000 virtual visits. 
but it is actually very much used in the States to create virtual visits. And it works quite well. But you always run the risk that it doesn't work or that it, it is discontinued. With regards to the discontinuation of expeditions, it was discontinued, but all of the resources that were generated have been used to integrate them in Google as a culture, and you have them there. And it's a resource that's quite interesting. I liked it better the way it was before, because it was very interesting to show it to students. But we still have ways of showing it. For example, Google's Earth and Cultures. You have expeditions like this Raid Coral Reef in Australia with 360 degrees, pictures, audios, explanations. And it's not the same we used to have with Google Arts and Culture, but it's interesting. And to end with all of this, with regards to platforms, Unity, and to use different blinds, like Backlog, which is also for free, and it allows you to have augmented reality experiences. I mean, it's a huge platform that can be used for the creation of these type of experiences. But you need knowledge to use Unity. You need knowledge, you need computer science knowledge. Not easy to use. But it's a very good way of going about it. Fine, thank you for your answers. Sorry, sorry. What's very advisable, as Jesus said, is that there is a, an ongoing training by the Ministry of Education of the Government of Catalonia. And I would recommend you to participate in that training suggestion, in that training workshop. But if you have any specific questions, we will be delighted to help you. Excellent. We have another question from Neus Muñoz, who is a teacher. The first thing she says is congratulations. A very excellent presentation. I have understood that with Edscube, uh, you know, could you could you specify a bit more? I guess it's related to what you have just said. Merck's, the Merge Cube has two apps to it. You can create present objects from your computer with a content manager. And you can create these 3D objects for your library. And you can create collections. I have a YouTube channel in which I explain this in detail, how to create these 3D objects and to place them there. I mean, these are static 3D objects. They're not animated. You can use Inkercad as well for 3D objects and then to integrate them in the merge queue. Excellent, thank you. We have a comment from Antonio Romero, who says, well, with these offline resources, we could assure that if it's discontinued, that it continues, right? We could have a backup, an upline of all of this. In fact, some schools have used Google Expeditions, and we have downloaded those expeditions. We had different expeditions, and we have downloaded about 30 of those expeditions. And yes, they can be done offline, but 
once you have downloaded them and they stop working because they have become obsolete or whatever, well, that's a problem because when it comes to installing them in another device, we will have problems of compatibility. But yes, it can be you can download those resources and use them offline, especially some of the possibilities given by expeditions are very interesting to the professor. But you have it offline, yes, you can do it too. Yes. I mean, one way would be to go offline if things are discontinued. But if you have not downloaded them already, well, bad luck. Yeah. With regards to education, you can download many things in the device. And it's a strong, it, you need a strong device because it actually consumes a lot of space. But yes, you could work with the download. With regards to Google Expeditions, the offline, I mean, this will disappear. But if I'm not mistaken, you know, the, 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 the goal was to have it shared in the classroom. Well, my recommendation would be that given what we have had in these last few years, the idea would be to download and keep the files. And then if something new appears, you, you, you can actually have them. But it's very hard to have material that's not uploaded in the net, in the network, because I mean, it, 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 it's as I've said beforehand, we use QR codes to direct the students wherever we want to direct them. So I recommend that if you get into this world, you should always bear in mind that you should keep all of that material, you should store it. Well, whilst listening to you, to your presentation process, wow, I thought, yes, we have to keep this in order to visualize it. Very interesting indeed. Fine, well, thank you very much indeed for these comments. Very inspiring. Well, we haven't got any further questions. So I'd like to encourage people listening to us to use the chat box to ask questions. I'm going to ask you a question whilst others are coming up. How can these interactive experiences, how these learning contents, immersive learning contents that are making possible that maybe were not possible when we talked about the advantages, how does that transform the role that the teacher has in front of students? And going a bit beyond this, almost all of your examples are quite individualistic. Are we thinking about the future? I reckon this can be done now already. But how mature is this technology? Which experiences can be shared between the different participants? But first, let me ask you about the transforming effect of all of this on the teacher's role. Francesc, would you like to start? Well, if, if you want, you can answer. Well, of course, things are changing. The role of teachers, the role of students, the distribution of the classroom, the layout of the classroom, everything is changing. And technologies are one of the drivers for that change. For example, one of the things we have done with augmented reality and virtual reality, we do not know which results we have had. We are very satisfied with the work we have done because the students develop very long wings and they start flying. But we do not know, we are just at the start of it all. But clearly, 
these realities have on the school, we should not make an abusive or an exaggerated use of them. But for some specific cases, they can be indeed very useful. And without augmented reality, nobody, the cleverest kid at school had the greatest problems with the visualization of space. I mean, I, I haven't got an answer for you, but I reckon everything will change. Everything is changing. And we need to accompany, we need to coach this case. That will never change. To turn them into good citizens and good people. Well, the role changes fully. It becomes, I mean, instead of having all students sitting down and listening to you, or working in a cooperative way, we lose learning spaces, students will move, they will go out to the corridor. In our case, as Jesus has said, we always want to accompany them. We will always coach them. We can't actually give up that role. So where will technology take us to? I hope towards better situations. The problems I had a few years ago, I hope will be overcome. And, you know, the administration is also in part responsible for that. Our conditions have improved, but I believe that technologies have come into the classroom to stay. I would add something to what Jesus and Francesca have said. I fully agree with the fact that one of the things that changes is the layout and the adjustment of the space. And from that point of view, the definition and the design of learning spaces is included in educational centers. And it's playing a crucial role when it comes to creating spaces that are flexible and valuable. Because as Francesc and Jesus have said, these technologies have shaped these spaces. The use of these technologies promotes cooperation among students and also amongst teachers. And the teacher's role, if you look at it from the outside, because I'm not a teacher, but I believe that at the end of the day, you're including yet another tool for the teacher's task. I mean, as opposed, I mean, they have to assess the range of tools they have to promote learning at the classroom. Now they have these new tools in their toolkit. And the teacher has to Assess, needs to gauge and evaluate whether that resource is useful to use it in certain specific situations. And after that, you need to accompany and coach the students in that learning process. So it's yet another tool that this teacher needs to assess, whose, whose, whose usefulness the teacher needs to assess when it, in order to improve the uh, coaching of the student. In my, in my opinion, it has this double full view. I mean, you, the teacher needs to assess the technology and also decide whether it's useful in his or her coaching of the students. I fully agree with that. There is a sentence that has become a commonplace, but technologies, like anything else, are just a means. They're not an end in itself. They're just a means to an end. And they are here not to use them for their user's sake, but to improve the student's learning experience. And the role, the teacher's role. The teacher becomes a guide in these processes. The technology is a format as happened at the beginning of YouTube. It was something that students talked about for leisure. And immediately, teachers saw there in YouTube a resource to connect students, to connect with the student reality. And here too, we want to connect at an educational level. I mean, this is what's happening too 
with some cases. For example, the Vodbox platform. Kids are the creators using Unity or, you know, not necessarily a very powerful team. And they, create, they can create their own docs and they can program simple things. So with all of this, what I mean is that somehow teachers, as teachers, this is a reality for us. We have to be connected to our students, with the things they enjoy in their leisure time. We can always find in these leisure tools an educational usefulness that help us in the learning processes. And our role is constantly mutating, and but ultimately it's always about coaching them and accompanying them. Well, you see, the problem there is, I'd like to add something to that. Yesterday, it was said that the teacher's training program has multiplied by an exponential figure in the last 15 years. So many new things have happened and have developed. And we need to change the teacher's mindset and role immediately. That's so important, yes. That final comment by Jesus is so important. Well, we have a question, a consultation. Okay, I'm going to try to have an intuition of this question. Maybe you will tell me if I have interpreted you well. The big techs of the technological world, are they at the front line or are they waiting for the future? I guess this is a question related to the maturity of technologies and also related to what you have said. The, the, the comments you have made about the transformation of everything, not, not, I mean, not only in the field of education, but every field. Technology is making an exponential progress. So from that point of view, when we talk about immersive technologies, what is you know, at which point are they? I mean, are they mature or uh, is it an ongoing process or what, what can we expect? Well, if you'll allow me, I believe the concept of being mature can be interpreted in different manners and from different perspectives. What's clear is this, is that this is a field that's evolving at an incredible speed. A device that appears today is obsolete in three months' time because there is another one that just leaves it backwards. So mature, mature in the sense that they can be used, that you can do think with them, and that you do not need to be an expert in computer science to have a, a user experience, that the users can actually have experience, but the results the ones that can be applied with usefulness. Yes, that's clear. Is this still evolving on a daily basis, actually on an hourly basis? That's also true. If you're waiting or expecting something to be stable and to be valid for the next five years, in five years, things can change 100%. And with regards to the big tech, for example, I could talk about the company's positioning. Microsoft, Google, and Facebook. They are betting on mixed reality, 
augmented and virtual reality in the construction of a whole ecosystem, both of these devices and tools to create mixed content. You know, it's an extended reality mode in which you're wearing eyeglasses that increases your physical environment with digital elements and with factors that are also close to augmented reality. It's like a vitaminized, you know, augmented reality. And these are devices that allow you to create content. Google, in the case of expeditions, we saw that they bet on this, but they also on the bet on devices they have discontinued. And also for 3D things, as Jesus has said, they have abandoned it, but they have left it for the free use of anybody. Anybody can use the code of the application and draw in 3D and that in virtual reality, and you can actually go through other space drawing, as Jesus said, with a Cereza, for example, for the cube that can be seen from the back. And then that actually enhances your spatial notion. And anybody can have it. Any company can actually use it and can use this tool. And you're generating applications with it. And finally, Facebook, is betting very much, above all, on popularizing, on making these virtual reality sensors to be portable by people, generating hardware, uh, different that from, from what they are producing traditionally two years ago. 200,000, now with Facebook that has become very popular because not not because they have a educational spirit, but because it's a new way of relating to people. It's a new way that people have to relate to each other. And they're betting on that too. It is said that virtual reality, the next platform, that in the future, many of the scenarios that we see nowadays will be carried out in virtual reality in uh, on a distribution mode with people who are remotely connected and behind this all there are many many companies art companies that are betting on this because it's very useful not only in the field of education but also in very profitable fields and they are betting on it and it is evolving very quickly so that mature, yes, but under constant change as well. well. Thank you, Luis. And I'm going to thank you all for your contributions. We have just two minutes left. I think it has been a very interesting session indeed. I'd like to thank all of the participants for their proactive participation. And I hope everyone has felt stimulated by what has been said here. And this has happened in all fields, the advantages, the examples, and the applications in different fields with this learning common component. Very interesting. Thank you very much indeed for this panel discussion, this very rich panel discussion, and I hope to see you again soon. Thank you and goodbye. Thank you. Goodbye. Goodbye.